Now, a Proton rocket carrying three satellites for Russia's new navigation system called GLONASS has been launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The satellites are the three missing modules, which should en enable GLONASS to cover all of Russia. Another nine satellites will be launched into orbit in 2010, according to the head of Russia's space agency. And those will give the system a global coverage, which will have both military and civilian use. A feature especially relevant after the recent bombing of the Moscow-St. Petersburg train is that GLONASS could be used to prevent terror attacks on railroads. It could scan areas for suspicious movements and objects. And, uh, well, for now, the most famous GLONASS user is Vladimir Putin's Labrador, who has a chip built into her dog collar. We're now joined by René Pichel, the head of the Moscow office of the European Space Agency. Uh, Mr. Pichel, thank you very much indeed for being Hello. with us here in the studio. So when, fin when finished, will the GLONASS, uh, how can we compare the GLONASS system with the uh, rival uh, GPS in America? Well, I wouldn't say rival. Both systems have the same technical uh, tasks and, uh, and uh, they are based on the same technical principles. However, there are a few differences. Uh, for instance, uh, the inclination in, in which the uh, satellites are positioned in space are different. Mm -hmm. uh, and the inclination of the GLONASS system is higher, which means uh, you have a better coverage for the northern latitudes, which is crucial for Russia. But in principle, uh, they have, as I said, they have the same tasks, uh, and uh, I would see them rather complementing uh, than rivaling to each other. Mm, I see. But uh, why does Russia need its own uh, system from your point of view? Because this is a very crucial technology asset, uh, and you need it to have independent of others. Uh, and uh, this is not only, of course, uh, for the military; it's also for civil applications. Uh, you have to, you need to have, because it's so crucial. You, ha you need to have it independent from others, and you need to have your own system. Yeah, C can you please tell us a little bit more about uh, the system because uh, some average users might think uh, like systems like like GLONASS can just uh, can be used in uh, to road uh, for road navigation. So what more can you say? Well, uh, I think uh, the future will show us uh, that there are much more applications uh, than just road navigation. There are lots of applications uh, where you need to know your, uh, very precisely your position. Uh, and then, of course, it depends uh, pretty much on how easy to access and how easy to use uh, the receivers are on the receiving side, on the user side. Uh, f for instance, uh, which comes into mind uh, immediately is uh, right now you already can uh, add position information to your photos. Mm -hmm. uh, to your digital, fo digital photos, which makes it then much easier to search for photos. Or if you want to have stereo photos, you need the position of the two shots uh, very precisely. So and I, uh, I'm sure that in five years we will have uh, much, much more applications uh, mm -hmm. than now. But again, this depends on uh, how easy you can really access uh, the receiving stations. Yeah, I see. And uh, we've heard that Europe is also developing a similar project. Can you tell us more about it? Yes. Uh, Europe is going to uh, we already have uh, two satellites in orbit, uh, which are more uh, test satellites. Uh, the next uh, four satellites uh, will be launched in the next two years, uh, and then uh, the remaining uh, will be launched in 2012 and 2013. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this is all paid uh, by the European Union, and ESA uh, is in the role of the prime contractor for that, so we are the project leader uh, to implement the system. All right. Thank you very much indeed for for your uh, insight, Mr. René Pichel.